Hello. In this video, we're looking at the analysis technique that we use to calculate the best fit line through a group of data. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how we actually calculate the slope and the intercept of our best fit line. And then in a second video, we'll look at how we can do a statistical test to find out whether or not our line has a slope that's, that is significantly different from zero. But we're going to start with just looking at some data and thinking about why we might want to put a line through those data and then how we can put a line through those data. So here, here are our data. These were originally published in a paper by Chang et al. in the Journal of Applied Ecology. And what these data are, are data on the below ground primary productivity of some plots of land. And that's plotted on the y-axis here. And then we have the relative biomass of grasses. So this isn't the absolute biomass of grasses. This is the relative amount of the plants on that plot that were grasses as opposed to forbs or other kinds of plants. And what you can see quite clearly is that we've got some kind of negative relationship here. So as the proportion of grass in the plot increases, so the below ground primary productivity decreases. And if we want to, we can do a correlation calculation for that and, and calculate the strength of that correlation that we can see. So we can ask R to do this with the core function, and there it is. And we've got a correlation of minus 0.84. That's Pearson's product moment correlation. So R is minus 0.84. So that's a fairly strong negative correlation. So we know that primary productivity is decreasing as the proportion of grass in the plot increases. But we might also want to put a line through these data. And if we can put a best fit line through these data, then we can express the relationship between primary productivity and the relative biomass of grasses in a more precise way. So we could, for example, say for every 10% increase in the relative biomass of grass, on average, below ground primary productivity decreases by a certain amount. And we could also use it for prediction. So we could say, for example, if we had a relative biomass of grasses of 20, then we would expect to see, we would predict a certain degree of below ground primary productivity. So in addition to just calculating a correlation, which tells us how strong the relationship is and what direction it is, we might also want to put a line through these data, which we can use to give some more precise descriptions of that relationship. So here's, here's an example of these data with a line through it. You can just see by eye that line looks like it's a fairly good fit. But is it is it the best fit line? Well, it's it's hard to tell just by looking at it. We can compare this with other lines. So here's a different line. And you can maybe see that that line isn't such a good fit to the data. So maybe the first line we saw is a better line for describing this relationship than the second line. But what we need to do is find out what's the best line. So how do we define the line that is the line of best fit to a set of data like this? Well, one thing we can look at are the values that we call the residuals. So if we put a line through a set of data like this, we can calculate how far each data point is from the line. And that distance from the line is something that we call the residual. And if we take all of the residuals and add them together, then the line that gives the smallest sum of residuals would maybe be the best fit line to the data. So here's the line that we looked at first, and I've plotted all the residuals in. And if you were to take all of those and add them together, that would give you some indication of how good a fit the line was to the data. Here's the second line that we looked at. And you can maybe see that if you took all of these residuals, that would give you a bigger value than the sum of the previous set of residuals, because some of those residuals are very large indeed. There's a problem with just using the residuals, though, and that problem is that if you have a line that fits quite well, then your residuals will actually just add up to zero because some of them are negative and some of them are positive. And that's not really a great indication of what's going on because you've still got a certain amount of dispersion of the data around the line and you want to quantify that amount of dispersion around the line. So what we actually do, rather than just adding all the residuals together and taking the sum to give us an indication of how good our line is, we square each residual, which makes the negative ones positive, And then we take the sum of the squared residuals to give us our best fit line. So in linear regression, what we're looking for is the line that gives us the lowest value 
for the sum of the squared residuals. Okay, how do we how do we find this line? Well, before we go any further, let's just look at the way we can describe a line in terms of algebra. So you might well have seen a line described using a formula like this, where y equals mx plus c. You might have seen a line described as y equals a plus bx. Or if you've been reading about general linear models, you might see a line described using something like this, yi equals beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus eta i, where eta is an error term. All of these are basically saying the same thing. We, to describe a straight line, we need to know two things. So we need to know the intercept, which is the value of y when x is equal to 0. And in these equations, that's either c a or beta 1. And then we need to know the slope, which in these equations is m, b, or beta 2. And we multiply the slope by the x value, and that then gives us the equation of our straight line. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be using the y equals a plus bx notation. But if you've seen other notations, then they're all basically the same thing. OK, so how do we find the values of a and b that give us the minimum value for the sum of the squared residuals? Well, we can write down the sum of the squared residuals in a number of ways. If you just call the residuals e for error, it's going to look like that if you've got i data points. Or you can write it down like that, where that y hat is the predicted value of y. Or you can expand that value for y hat into the actual equation of the line. And again, we've got i data points here. So for every i, every data point in 1 to i, we calculate this, and then we square it, and then we add them all together. And what we can do is we can take that last formula, and we can use calculus to calculate the value of b, which minimizes those values in there. And it turns out that the value of b that gives you the minimum sum of squared residuals is this where x bar here is the mean value. So x bar is the mean value for the variable that we've plotted on the x-axis, and y bar is the mean value for the variable we've plotted on the y-axis. The term that we've got on the top there is known as the sum of products, and the term that we've got on the bottom is the sum of squares for x. Those of you who are sharp of eye might have noticed that some of these terms are quite similar to terms that you see appearing in other calculations in statistics. And in particular, that sum of products on the top is very important when we're calculating the correlation coefficient. So we could just calculate our estimate of the slope from this equation here. Or alternatively, you can rearrange this and do a bit of algebra. And it turns out that the estimate for the slope is also equal to the correlation coefficient multiplied by the standard deviation of your y variable divided by the standard deviation of your x variable. And this is the formula that we're going to use to calculate the slope for our data set that we're looking at. So I've just used R here to produce some summary statistics for our two variables. So productivity is, so the uh, below ground net primary productivity, which is our y variable, is on the top. And we've got the mean and the standard deviation for that. And the relative biomass of grass, which is our x variable, is below that. And we've got the mean and standard deviation for that. So we can use this to calculate b, because we've already calculated the correlation coefficient. And if you remember, that value is minus 0.8486. So to calculate the slope for our best fit line, we just take that value and we multiply it by the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x which gives us 0.8486 multiplied by 1.98. And that value is equal to minus 1.68. So we can calculate the slope of the line that gives us the minimum value for the sum of the squared residuals. And that's minus 1.68. But now we need to calculate the intercept as well. So how do we calculate the intercept? Well. One thing we know about the best fit line is that it will always pass through the point defined by the mean of the x variable and the mean of the y variable. So the best fit line will always go through that point there. 
And since we know the mean of x and the mean of y, we can use this to calculate a. So let's just run through that. So we know the slope of the line is minus 1.68. So we can write down the equation of our line like that. And this equation here is the line at that point where it goes through the mean of x and the mean of y. So what we can do is we can rearrange that so we can solve for a. So the mean of y plus 1.68 times the mean of x equals a. We know what those values are. We've got the mean of y and we've got the mean of x. So we can just plug those into our equation and we can calculate a, which is equal to 214.8. So the equation of our best fit line through this set of data is y equals 214.8 minus 1.68 times x. Of course, we don't always want to calculate the best fit line by hand. In fact, most of the time, we're not going to want to do that. And instead, we'd rather get a computer to do that for us. So what I've done here is I've used R to calculate the best fit line through these data. I've used the LM function, which is linear model, and linear regression is part of the overall linear model. And I've given it our two variables, and I've told it which data set to look in. And then I've used the summary table to bring up, uh, then I've used the summary function, sorry, to bring up the coefficients table. And the coefficients table has the estimates for the intercept and the slope. So the intercept according to R is 215.6. We calculated it as 214.8, but the difference between those two is just because of rounding error. And then the slope according to R is minus 1.678. And that is, once again, the same as what we calculated, given a tiny bit of rounding error. So we've been able to calculate the best fit line really quite easily for our bivariate data set. And then we've run the same data set through R. And rather encouragingly, it gives us the same answers. So that is indeed our best fit line, which I've now drawn into this graph using Abline. And that's the equation of our best fit line there. So let's just summarize this. So a lot of the time when we have a bivariate data set, we want to put a line through it in order to describe the relationship between X and Y. The way we do this is by using this analysis called linear regression. And by using linear regression, we get estimates for the intercept and the slope of the line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. And that gives us one version of the best fit line. There are other ways to define a best fit line, but this is the one that you'll see by far the most commonly used. OK, in the next video, what we'll look at is how we can do a statistical test to see whether or not our line is actually significantly different from a line with a slope of zero. Thank you.